Realme 7 5G is one of those phones that is packed with a lot of features and technology considering its price. For just about 279 pounds or euros, you are getting 5G, great specs, a large screen with 120 hz refresh rate, a massive battery, and a lot more. All of that sounds really impressive. Let's take a further look and see how this phone performs in practice. I love that Realme chose to implement a matte glass finish on the backplate, which for my taste is much better looking than glossy surfaces that become a smudge fest in an instant. Having said that, the backplate still attracts some fingerprints. The official color name of the phone I have is Baltic Blue. The phone looks blue, but it also has some violet gradients. To be honest with you, I had to change a white balance setting on my camera several times to show the color accurately, but it may still look different due to different lighting conditions. This is how the Realme 7 5G looks like next to its closest competitor, the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite. The Realme phone is slightly shorter, narrower, and lighter. It also has a smaller camera bump. Check out my Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite review and you'll find the link to it in the video description down below. Flip the phone to the front and you'll be greeted with one of the key highlights of the device, a super snappy 120Hz refresh rate display. I found this IPS LCD panel to be nice and sharp overall, considering the price. Well, the sunlight legibility could be better, but you can still see the screen on sunny days. If you combine a 120Hz refresh rate with good specifications, a lot of RAM, and the Realme UI that is clean yet packed with features, you're looking at a really fast and snappy $300 device. From navigating through the UI and tweaking some settings to opening and closing apps, the Realme 7 5G feels snappy and responsive. MediaTek Dimensity 800U may still sound inferior to Snapdragon chipsets to some users, but I found gaming performance to be quite impressive. I was able to play my favorite titles without any issues. While I did see some skipped frames in Asphalt 9, but other games like Asphalt Extreme, Call of Duty, and PUBG on HD graphics ran well. What impressed me the most was the fact that the phone stayed almost completely cold to the touch even after about 30 minutes of gaming. What didn't impress me was a bottom-firing loudspeaker. It's not bad per se, but I would say that the sound quality is just mediocre. Here is a quick audio sample. The overall build quality of the phone is good and it feels nice in the hand despite using plastic in the frame and in the backplate. It's a high quality plastic that doesn't make the phone look or feel cheap, so you don't need to be concerned at all. The phone is also very thin and light considering it packs a massive 5000 mAh battery that can be recharged in just about 1 hour and 5 minutes with a supplied fast charger and only in 26 minutes it can charge nearly 50%. You can watch up to 17 hours of YouTube videos on less than 50% of screen brightness or get 9 or 10 hours of screen on time while using the phone more intensively. One of the best in class. Now the test nose section. I found both face unlock and fingerprint scanner to be super fast and reliable. Also, the button placement is very convenient for my taste and the keys are clicky and responsive. The phone has NFC, reliable GPS, good call quality, and a hybrid dual SIM and a micro SD card slot. I wish Realme used a dedicated SD card slot, but that's the shortcoming I can live with. The phone supports dual 5G SIM, which means that you can connect 5G via either SIM card for a high-speed internet experience. In addition to this, this phone gets support for 12 main 5G bands around the world. Now the cameras. The phone's quad lens system is comprised of a 48 megapixels main camera, an 8 megapixels ultra wide, a macro, and a portrait lens. On the front, we have a 16 megapixel shooter. After taking hundreds of shots, I can say that this camera system is one of the best in class in both good and low light situations. Most of the daylight shots were taken on a dark, cloudy, and foggy day, but the results are still quite impressive. Even 2x digital zoom images look quite good. If you take pictures on a sunny day, the quality is better, but keep in mind that HDR tends to oversaturate the colors quite a bit. 
Also, the wide-angle lens produces noticeably less detail than the main shooter, but that's the case with pretty much all of the phone's cameras. Interestingly enough, a 48 megapixels mode usually provides better looking and much sharper images than using the auto mode, which is not usually the case with other phones I've tested. I took all of the low light shots on a foggy night, but I gotta tell you that the camera performance is quite impressive in both auto and night modes. The dedicated tripod night mode takes low light quality to the next level, considering this is a $300 device. These are definitely one of the best low light shots I've seen in this price range. With just a little bit of light, you can take nice looking selfies in auto and even in portrait modes. There is even a dedicated night selfie mode, but if you want to achieve good results, I suggest you use a tripod. In good light, selfies usually come out nice and sharp and selfie portrait mode blurs out the background nicely. A dedicated portrait mode works well on both humans and animals. Edge detection is usually spot on and the object is nicely separated from the background. The macro lens produces mediocre quality pictures, but that's not my style of shooting anyway. Now let's talk about video capabilities of this device. Just before we start, I uploaded a lot of uncut video samples to the Techline HD Extras YouTube channel so you can have a better understanding of the overall quality. In short, I would recommend you using 4K 30fps mode that produces nice quality video even handheld. The 4K footage comes out surprisingly stable and smooth. If you need a buttery smooth video, throw the phone on a gimbal. I use the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. 1080p 30 and 60fps footage also looks pretty good. The phone also has Ultra Steady and Ultra Steady Max modes. As the names imply, these modes allow you to record very stable handheld video, but the overall quality does not impress. There is simply too much noise and video artifacts. My suggestion, just stick to 4K 30fps and you'll be happy with the results. 1080p selfie video looks nice, but it's quite shaky. Thankfully, there is electronic image stabilization that does smooth out the video at the expense of noticeable crop factor. For those who prefer manual settings, there is a dedicated movie mode. The Realme 7 5G is a really impressive phone for the price. Sure, it has a few shortcomings like mediocre loudspeaker, the camera's steady video modes produce noisy footage, but this is simply nitpicking. For the asking price of about 280 pounds or euros, the Realme 7 5G is one of the best phones you can buy. It's packed with a ton of features and technology that works well as a cohesive unit, making it easy to recommend to anyone who is looking for a near excellent mobile phone without breaking the bank. Now a word from the channel sponsor, Polar Backup. Polar Backup is a complete cloud backup solution to protect and archive your data. One of the standout features, Polar Backup uses cold storage which may have a bit slower retrieval time but this allows you to have tons of space for a really low cost and make it great for archiving infrequently used data. Another key feature, Polar Backup is incredibly cheap, a fraction of the cost of external hard drives offering the same amount of space but are prone to failure, damage or getting lost. Other features include zero-knowledge encryption, PC and Mac compatibility, and scheduling that lets you run a backup when your network is less used, like overnight. Right now, when you buy a 5TB lifetime plan, Polar Backup will give you another 5TB plan totally free. Check out the link in the video description to get Polar Backup today. What do you think about the Realme 7 5G? Would you buy this phone or would you choose another option, for example, the Xiaomi Mi 10 t Lite? Tell me in the comment section down below. Also like the video if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on social media, and as always, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.